And welcome everybody to a comics episode of the Animaniacast. Hello, genius people. Yako Warner here. The only show we listen to in the Water Tower is the Animaniacast. I bet you can't guess why. Good night, everybody. Welcome everybody once again to the Animated Cast. This is the podcast that is dedicated to the animated television series Animaniacs, as well as other shows in the Rugerverse, such as Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky the Brain, and Freakazoid. And today we're talking about an Animaniacs comic book all the way back from 1996. I am <laughs> Joey, and joining me once again. For this comic book discussion is my brother, Nathan. Are your feet tired, Sugar Lump? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Whoa. Hey. Uh, <laughs> what a line. Yeah. Well, that that is a line from today's comic book, of course. This is... Oh. Yes. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly is uh, not here with us today. So we did what we like to do, and it's just us, and we don't have anything else to talk about. It's let's talk about Animaniacs comic books, which we have not done for a very long time. Yeah, that's true. Um, I was very disappointed that I, I had bought all these comic books, or at least many, many, many of them, for like a buck or two. They're very – if you go to the right place online, uh, right online comic shops, you can find a lot of these for just a couple bucks. And I bought this comic book. And I don't know where it is anymore. <laughs> I bought it so long ago, and I remember seeing it because on the cover of this, it has Wacko dressed up as a giant sausage, and it looks just weird. <laughs> um, not the best cover, just a weird looking cover. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, that does that comic doesn't look that interesting. Well, it's somewhere around my house or something, <laughs> but I couldn't find it. So. This is what so we you just didn't do. read it. So no, we, we didn't uh... read it. No, this is what <laughs> you can do, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't find your comic book around the house, wherever it's not, it happens no, to be, yeah, we're not going to saying this is what you should do, but this is what you could could do. do. <laughs> this is what you could we're not going to endorse this because no. Well, there. Well, the Animaniacs comics are all out of print, mm-hmm. so uh, <laughs> uh what you could do is you, if you just type in this Animaniac, Animaniacs comic issue 20, you'll probably find some websites out there that have it scanned and that you can mm-hmm. just flip through these pages. Um, I was a little disappointed with the scan that I had right here that the, the person did not scan the advertisements, which, come on, that's oh, like one yeah. of the best parts of the comic book, in my opinion. I love talking about the ads. But no ad talk, This no, no issue. If we do find... Or if I find the comic book somewhere around my house, I'll, I'll make sure to... We'll do it as a bonus audio. Bonus on audio Patreon. on Patreon. Get ready, patrons. This is bonus <laughs> audio. There's an ad for Superman yeah. comic Ooh, books. Ads. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Quick. We're gonna... If that's not Tell worth what four bucks... Yeah, see, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, at any rate, uh, th- this this com- so go you can go online. I'm not saying you should, but you could, or uh, you know, whatever. And uh, just be wary that the ads that you see on there are not may not kid- be uh, yeah. <laughs> they're not kid friendly. <laughs> they're, they're the many of them are definitely not kid friendly because they're they're trying to get you to go to other uh, nefarious sites. So just be aware of that um i think if you I, th- I think if you're going to share this with your kids though i think you can right click on these and save them as jpegs and have a nice but i but then you might get viruses on your computer look all i'm saying is it's yeah Use you're taking on, the like, risk yeah <laughs> we'll take the risk for you and tell you everything that's in it so exactly if you want to be completely <laughs> safe then don't just listen to us talk about it but i will tell you folks this was i don't know but this might be it's been a while since we've read these comics. This might be my favorite comic of the series that we've read so far. Uh, issue number 20. Maybe. Uh, what, what were the other? There was that Egyptian one was really good, right? The Egyptian one was really good, and that was written by uh, Charles M. Howell 
and Gordon Bresick. So that really had uh, an, a classic Animaniacs feel. This one didn't have a Warner or a Pinky in the Brain. It to, did not. So. And, I, and they may have at this point had their own spinoff comic. I wanna, That's true. It's possible. I, I want to say that it's possible that the Pinky in the Brain, uh, you know, went off into their own thing. And so they weren't putting them in this comic. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's what may, may have happened. Um, this issue is completely dedicated to the theme of James Dean, who it's the the issue is t- it basically titled "Rebels Just Cause," in reference to Rebel Without a Cause. Um, Nathan, have you watched any James Dean movies? I've seen Rebels Without a Cause or Rebel Without a Cause. Rebel Without a Cause. They never made uh, the sequel. Rebels yeah. Without a Cause. Rebels. Well, I always think of the. <laughs> Our brother did that song, Rebels Without Applause. <laughs> oh, that's a funny one. Man, they should have done that one. I'm really, oh, well, uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, what a funny little thing. So, uh, <laughs> Rebels Without Applause. Uh, th- yeah, this one really felt um, like classic Animaniacs. Not all the jokes necessarily worked uh, 100% on it, but I think maybe it was because. Maybe it's because of the reboot. I was just kind of like looking forward to uh, this kind of formula mm. <laughs> of of the Warners just act the uh, terrorizing somebody and uh, him ending up improving his skills through their interaction, even though they drove him crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Slappy just bombing thing, bombing Walter Wolf. And it really does have this classic feel. I, I, I was, even though, like I said, not I wasn't necessarily laughing <laughs> at it. <laughs> it's hard to laugh at comics. Though, it is. Just, like reading it. It to is. Yourself. It is. It, but I did make me smile and I was amused. I was amused throughout the entire issue. So uh, this, this issue has three segments. It has Rebels Just Cause. And then it has East of Burbank. And the last segment was called Grande. Uh, these are all in reference to James Dean. Obviously, the first one we said, Rebel Without a Cause, turning into Rebels Just Cause. The second one was East of Burbank, which is in reference to James Dean's movie East of Eden. And the final one, I just thought, well, it's just called Grande. Is that like, what, Rio Grande? Or what? what's that about? Well, I had to look at James Dean's Wikipedia, and it turns out he made a movie called Giant... Ah, I was like, big? No, giant. So <laughs> Tom was, Hanks. Yeah. And... So, yes, James Dean's, uh, of course, he he died uh, at a young age, so his filmography is pretty short. So, unfortunately, I, not knowing anything about J- James Dean, I think some of these jokes kind of went over my head. But we're going to try to talk about the cultural references that we, we could catch. Uh, but, Nathan, why don't you go, let's go ahead and start off here with Rebels Just Cause. And Rebels Just Cause was written by Sean. Ka- oh boy, I can't even read this. Korean? Carrion? Car- Carolan, I think it says. Uh, so, I see an I in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like it's Sean Carolan and Jennifer Moore. And the artists were Omar Oranda and Scott McRae. Letter was Ter- Teresa Davidson, and the colorist was Joe Mignot. Nathan, why don't you tell us what happens here in Rebels Just Cause? All right. Well, it starts off with a a car chase scene. I don't know if you like. This is kind of you know. This is a scene straight out of Rebels Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, they have this the game of chicken where they gotta race their cars to the edge of a cliff, and uh, we have this actor who's playing this uh, the main character. It turns out to be a giant chicken himself, um, a chicken boo. So we have chicken boo, and they find out. So they have, they have to kick the the main actor off of the set because hey, this, we can have a giant chicken playing James Dean's role. <laughs> yeah, I will say that chicken. They say chicken. Well, they don't tell him chicken boo, but they say to him, "Hey, we're gonna race to the edge of this cliff, and then you got to jump out at the very last minute." Mm-hmm. Uh, so it show. It doesn't really show how he jumped out, but it does show this like kind of jumping lines of kind of boing 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 boing, boing. and and his, and his hair yeah. falls off. But Chicken Boo does like a great. You know, landing where on his feet, almost like a gymnast or something. It almost looked like he just was standing. I, I'm not. Ex- 
it didn't quite work. Mm-hmm. You had to do a little bit of a mental uh, fill in the blank on that that frame right there. But anyway, so Chicken Boo's kicked out. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? Uh, so they had to find a new actor, and uh, the director was like, oh, I got to find someone like right away. Where are we going to find a brooding American teen archetype? And hey, wouldn't you know, at the local uh, ice cream shop or whatever, <laughs> there's uh, James Dean himself uh, is having some ice cream, and uh, the director gives him the role, and he walks up to his car, and the Warners are inside the hood, and they heard that there was a giant chicken playing a, the lead in this movie, and they wanted to check it out for themselves. And James Dean's like, don't call me chicken, you know, as a James Dean kind of thing. And uh, Dot is uh, in love with James Dean because he's so handsome and brooding. Uh, and Wacko just wants something to eat because he's so hungry. Uh, so he thinks maybe James Dean is a giant chicken, so maybe yeah. I can eat him. Yeah, and- he talks about wanting to find <laughs> Chicken Boo so he could eat him, uh, <laughs> which is kind of sick and twisted, but funny yep. uh, for some reason because Wacko... Thinks- Maybe that James Dean is Chicken Boo himself. The, the whole time he just keeps calling yeah. James Dean Chicken. He keeps and, jumping out of places and saying Chicken, and um, throwing <laughs> rolls at him and trying to <laughs> eat him. I guess. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, as uh, they go to different locations that are in the actual movie uh, Rebel Without a Cause, uh, Yakko keeps explaining to us the archetypes that are <laughs> showing like, oh, this is the house where a brooding teen, a juvenile delinquent would be uh, formed in this kind of location. And and this is the kind of location a, ju- a juvenile delinquent would hide with his friends and this uh, abandoned house and things like that. So, yes. uh, and going to the police ha- uh, uh uh, office or whatever. I'm, I'm, I've never seen Rebel Without a Cause, but I did see a lot of kind of teen drama movies from the 50s and 60s whenever they were on like Mystery Science Theater or something. Like mm-hmm. I, I accuse my parents and all these different uh, old movies sure. where they, they do these archetypes of like, yes, this is where the guy who who his parents just won't listen to him. You know, his, his parents are either usually like neglect. They're always neglectful in some ways. Maybe they're out partying all the time. Uh, or they're too high society and they just ignore their son and so their son becomes a delinquent because of it. This one, the the dad wasn't manly enough. He wore an apron. Oh, yes. what a hard life to live with your dad cooks. Yes, and they meet <laughs> and they meet the dad in this one and they yeah. it, they they go into their the, you know his house and they all say hello suburbia. And see him, you know, James Dean's dad. And then they say, Mr. Howell. And they all pat him on the back and he's wearing his apron, eating his dinner. Uh, and they're saying, like, you know, take us for a ride in your coconut car. And, uh, you know, take us to a fancy Don, uh, d- dinner party with Don Knotts. Yeah. Which is Don Knotts in Rebel Without a Cause? Not I don't that know. I know of. I um, know, I've, I, unless he's like in the background, but I'm well, going to say he's not. In the- <laughs> okay. And then they say this thing of, does Lovely know that you're leading this double life, Thurston? I, so this is kind of a weird uh, a, a mix of references right here. Uh, so Mr. Howell was the character. Well, okay, Jim Backus played the dad mm-hmm. in Rebel Without a Cause. Jim Backus, by the way, is the voice of Mr. Magoo. Uh, in case you didn't know. Right? He looks like Magoo. He looks he- like Magoo. <laughs> But he did the voice. Song. But he was also Mr. Howell on G- Gilligan's Island. Okay. Um, so yes, and then they say like, "Does Lovely know that you're leading this double life?" Uh, meaning, you know, his wife, the, the millionaire, and his wife. Well, there you go. That's, that's, so I thought that was a really cool um, reference. And then they called him Thurston, uh, which. Yeah, I guess Thurston Howell was like, the millionaire's first name was Thurston. It's very so yeah, like go. I as a kid I wouldn't get it. I don't get it nowadays. It's definitely like I don't know who this joke was written for, but it's, I like that they went through the <laughs> exactly, and that's the th- and that's what I really get the impression of throughout this entire comic is that the writers were having fun writing this comic yeah. book, and you and I, even though I didn't get all the stuff of this. I was like, well, this is fun. You guys know what you're talking about, and you're having fun writing this story, and I'm in for the ride, and I'll hopefully get some of these references along the way. 
I did it. Yeah. It's definitely they had seen this movie a lot. Like they, they're oh. definitely like fans or you know of Rebel Without a Cause. And before, like, I mean, who, in 1996, this this came out in December of 1996. There's yeah. absolutely no way I would have been able to get all this stuff. Uh, this would be a comic well, book I would have to show yeah. my dad or something. Go, Dad, do you know what you're talking about right here? <laughs> true. That our dad was our Wikipedia page back in the day. Um, but yeah, this is a. Uh, but anyway, I think let's let's get back to the thing that was going on a sidetrack right there. <laughs> on a, one of the highlights of the comic for me at that moment. But they go to the yeah. old abandoned. Uh, this is the know. old abandoned mansion where yes. juvenile delinquents on the lam might take refuge from the cold, unsympathetic adult world. Uh, so that's that's Yakko's description of where we're at, uh, which is very <laughs> similar to what it is in the movie. So uh, this is where he takes like his girlfriend um, and his friends to hide out so um they uh in fact they see the actress that's going to be playing the uh leading the love interest for james dean so uh dot gets really upset about this and shows her uh her pet so uh and the pet seems to like the woman and then the woman just disappears i don't know what happens there. yeah it, th- <laughs> this was perhaps the only part of the the comic well there, there's there's a few parts in this comic that were that were very dated that we'd say, "Ooh, I don't think you could do that anymore." And and the number one thing that came up was this uh, this pet right here, because like you said, Dot becomes jealous of this love interest of James Dean. So she goes, "Oh, would you like to see my pet?" The woman screams. The monster says to the woman who is screaming, "What do you say we go back to my place?" And then apparently grabs the woman and takes her back into the box with him i guess so or he just left i'm gonna say he just uh, left. i think that since the woman's <laughs> gone and the line is showing that she disappeared like a cloud into the dot's box that the monster just grabbed this woman and took her into the box to which dot says men all species are the same yeah Eesh. yeah you can't uh that that doesn't quite work dot uh definitely in today's world in a cartoony way of saying you know what just grab women and just 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 Force take them, them back into to your, your place. place yeah just you come back to my place and grab them no it's not necessarily funny i mean it is a cartoon so it's silly but oh boy I think Yakko kills this other guy that's in the pool. No. <laughs> so uh, I think this is James Dean's friend who's kind of like a weirdo in the movie. But uh, he's in the uh, pool. There's an empty pool and he's uh, brooding, like thinking about how the world will end. And uh, Yakko's like, I think it'll end like this. And then a giant meteor, well, a meteor lands on top of him. And he's like, but it'll be a bigger rock, of course. And like, like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yes. Meanwhile, James Dean is still trying to hide from wacko who finds him and so they again have to run away and now they run to the uh police department uh which is a they go here a couple times in rebel without a cause but actually starts off in the police department um and it all leads up to the big line which is you're tearing me apart which uh you're tearing me apart lisa yes from the room (laughs) which was taken from Rebel Without a Cause, because he yes. is such a fan of Rebel Without a Cause. He took that line, and it you watch the movie Rebel Without a Cause, he says it very much the same as... <laughs> yeah, and which is so funny, because James Franco played both James Dean, like one of his first major roles, and he mm-hmm. just played the guy... I forget the, the director of, uh, of The, the room. room. Yeah, the yeah so actor. he played both. So how, how weird how all that works together. Except now he's canceled, so we can't. <laughs> yeah, James. Who? James Franco. James Franco. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He turns out. I don't know about him. So anyway. <laughs> but uh, so it turns out. I guess they were just trying to coach him the whole time. At least that's what they're taking credit for. Yes. As they uh, are at the final, uh, the premiere of uh, Rebel Without a Cause. They're standing out front, and they have the. They're teaching the water tower method. Uh, which I guess is like the there's, I guess there's like the Scorsese method and there's a bunch of different methods that people have right the Stanis, Stanislavski method. Stanislavski method so um, but yeah there we go they uh, their method is to drop drop anvils on people's heads so so it, the it, uh, reporter kind of looks like uh, Hello Nurse it but, does uh, there's a reporter hair. at the end she looks like Hello Nurse but a redhead um, so. but yes they helped him out and there you go. Because of them, it, it, luckily they were filming the entire thing. 
<laughs> somehow. Uh, so very cool. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That was that. Some said it couldn't be done. Some said it shouldn't be done. But the host of the Animaniacs cast said, "We're doing it anyway." That's right. It's the Animaniacs cast Patreon page. After more than four years of podcasting about Animaniacs. The Animaniac Cast is asking for you to become a patron and pledge your support. Your support not only helps cover the cost of podcast hosting, but it also gives you an opportunity to receive some exciting rewards. Some rewards include behind the scenes audio and video, voting rights that determine which episodes the Animaniac Cast will cover, video chats with the host of the show, Animaniac's vinyl decals sent right to your home. And much, much more, including exclusive episode commentaries from the creator of Animaniacs, Tom Ruger. For more information, go to patreon.com slash Animaniacast. Uh, let's go and just keep on moving. We're going to move right on over to East of Burbank. Hi, this is Slappy Squirrel, and unfortunately, you're listening to the Animaniacast. And East of Burbank was written by Sean Carlon and Jennifer Moore once again. Le- Leonardo Batic and Scott McRae did the illustrations. It was lettered by Teresa Davidson and colored by Joe Mignot once again. And this is a slappy squirrel cartoon. And this is taking place in Pasadena, 14 miles east of Burbank. Very cool. 1955. So we're, we're still in this time period. This, however, is dealing with James Dean once again. And I think they even call him James in this one. Uh, although they you know, did draw him a little bit differently and colored his hair a little bit differently. Basically what happens here is Skippy's watching Beanie and Cecil. And, uh, and they look exactly like Beanie and Cecil. It's very much on, on uh, model right there. And the power goes out because Sloppy just has decided to stop paying her electric bill for three months. So she's in a good mood, so she figures, you know what, I guess I'll go ahead and pay him, but she needs money. So she decides to become an actress to portray Kate, a shady, embittered old crank. Uh, And so she's like, oh, I think it'll be a reach, but she thinks she can pull it off. Uh, (laughs) So she goes to the set, and it turns out that they're kind of like, I guess, screen testing? some people one of which is james dean who has his nice little you know pompadour going on but the other one is walter wolf who is also trying to get this lead role and is dressed like james dean which looks very weird but he sees slappy and says hey this is great i might get the lead role and take care of slappy at the same time so perfect i think he's too old for this part (laughs) i think you know what he's (laughs) He he really gets in character. Um, he probably lied on his uh, on his uh, you know shot or something like that, saying he's you know that's I mean, how looks, actors do. Yeah, uh, some of these like Slappy looks a lot younger, and uh, Walter Wolf will look a lot younger than their old selves. So it's, uh, he still does have his little wrinkles around the mouth, to kind of like show like the the lack of teeth or something. But yeah. uh, but you know whatever he's whatever. he's <laughs> he's trying. He's an actor. He's an actor. He can act. He's he can act it. like a yeah. teenager. Uh, so anyway, there's there's a I, what I can only assume are scenes from East of Eden. Neither just, of us have seen this movie. Yes, so. <laughs> just kind of acted out once again. Um, the the one right here is the the director who is this really cool and a neat caricature. I have no idea if he's an actual caricature of the real director or not. But there's this scene where uh, Walter's gonna give her the bank book uh, from the prop table, so he gives her like a, a bank book, and then she takes it. Well, the bank book has dynamite in it, and he, you know, thinking that she's gonna walk away and she's gonna blow up, and then she says, "Ah, oh, no, this." you look like you could use this $5,000. Here you go. And she gives it back to him and he goes, oh, that's not in the script. But too late, Walter blows up because of that. Cut to another scene. Didn't really pay attention to this scene right here. In this scene, (laughs) (laughs) in this scene, Kate just confessed that she shot her Cal's father. I was Uh, like, there's so many spoilers in this. (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. Like if I ever see this movie now, I'm like no, <laughs> you're gonna apparently know that like the- he wants five thousand dollars, but this person won't give her give him five thousand dollars. But then eventually they do. <laughs> he, he, exactly. So he says. <laughs> Uh, so she says, open up the safe and go get the, the money. He says, no, you're supposed to open the safe and give me the money. You go, you sure, Walter? It seems, that, you know, it doesn't seem in character for this old gal. Uh, it's in the script for crying out loud. Look, you just walk over here to the safe. And, of course, there's more dynamite in the safe, and it blows Walter's face up. Um, so, again, it's a lot of this tricking Walter. To, you know, he's trying to get her to do it. Then she says, no, you do it. And then it gets him, you know, he gets hurt. Um the final scene right here is with James Dean trying to give money back to, I guess it's his father. I, I yeah, don't it's know supposed to be the father of James. Okay, Dean, the father of James or, Dean, know, the character, and it have they even have like a little side kind of pointing to show you that this is uh, Raymond uh, Massey, a respected actor, normally doesn't do comic books, and Raymond Massey was uh, an actor. An act- that's the actual actor's name. And he was in East of Eden right there. Uh, again, the, the same old joke. Mm-hmm. You know, he, This time Walter says, you just sit this one out. Sit here on this director's chair that just happens to have dynamite, which, of course, Slappy knows it's there. Uh, he, Walter goes into the scene where the Massey, the, the, whatever Mr. Massey is, <laughs> mm-hmm. gives, gives Walter the money instead. And... and uh, the money blows up because there's dynamite in there. Slappy says, thanks for helping me out. And that's pretty much it. I mean, he like, he gets blown up and then blown on to the, the chair that Slappy was. So he gets blown up twice. Twice. Okay. It's a little, yeah. You have to really look at these panels to figure out what's going on. (laughs) The directions, you have to look at the directions of the swoops and everything to find out what's going on. So multiple, uh, you know, problems right there for walter and uh slappy i guess doesn't get the role but she does get put in uh in charge of the movie's explosives which who knew that there were so many explosives in east of eden (laughs) but uh she 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 is and then she walter becomes the stunt boy yeah they both got roles so at least they're getting paid you know yeah and she blows walter up and i assume she gets her electricity back I could assume so. <laughs> we kind of forgot how we were, why we were even over this movie to begin with. But she. But it's safe to assume. More importantly, she got to, to explode things. You would think that she could be able to, to, to develop her own power with the amount of uh, explosives she's putting out every day. Couldn't she harness any of that to like do it? Put it into a generator or something like that. Right. I don't know. But. There you go. That's a slappy squirrel cartoon. Um, a little confusing with the references since we didn't really know what the heck was going on with it. But <laughs> but um, uh, it's possible that Ralph and Hello Nurse are dating. Did you see that on Variety? <laughs> are they in love? I did not see that. What was, it? was that on the, <laughs> so okay. first, she, she was we reading this, a... There's yeah. a Minerva pinup in that magazine. Yes. And there's... I think it says love or something like it was just hearts around Ralph and heart around Hello Nurse. She must like, be. She oh yes, I can see it now. It says variety, and then it says love with Ralph and Hello Nurse together. Are they in love? Question. It just says love question mark. Huh. Hmm. It's. I didn't know Variety was such a tab, tabloidish kind of a yeah. magazine, but uh, apparently this version is. And so, we got. A, there's a cameo of uh, Pinky and the Brain in one of there, these panels. The one. I thought it was. The, I thought that was the last story. No, they're they're also in this one. So if you look on the panel where Walter Wolf explodes oh, twice, I see him. They're in the little tiny little corner. So just what a little. Of... I went back just now because I only saw them just now. I didn't see them the first time I went through this. And and the brain is wearing some weird little hat. Looks I... like a Sherlock Holmes almost. But see, I, I'm wondering. I didn't if... spot him in one Rebel Without a Cause. I looked through there. I didn't see him, but. I'm wondering or, if this has any reference to what's going on in the Pinky the Brain comic book. Yeah, at the maybe. Same time, because they seem to be doing this a lot in the comics. When you start putting them together, especially with Pinky and the Brain, that they're they're referencing things that would happen in other issues of the comic book. So maybe we need to start doing uh, taking turns in between them. Maybe, to... yeah, maybe. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Anyway, that was the Slappy Squirrel run. Right there it was. It was fun. Good stuff. Anything yeah. in there that uh, didn't mention that you thought was cool, Nathan? Um, I saw 
Yakko on a box of cereal. Yes, like for with, coonskin hats. Yes, there's a coonskin hat. He's like Davy Crockett because Davy Crockett was popular yeah. back in the fifties, and apparently you get a free coonskin hat I'll, inside I'll of this box of cereal. Brandomaniacs, I'll say, or something. Or, yeah, but sure. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was some cool. It, again, just some cool, like again, made just stuff that made me smile. Like, yeah, this this is stuff that would happen in a real Animaniac cartoon. Multiple yeah. blows up. Sloppy keeps tricking him, and he blows up some more. <laughs> there you go. And there we go. You get some a... references to some actors and things. And yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and talk about the last uh, part of the comic, and that is the segment Grande. <laughs> And Grande was once again written by Sean Carlon and Jennifer Moore. Omar Aranda was the penciler. Scott McRae was the inker. Letterer Teresa Davidson. And the colorist was Jerome Yunker. Ooh, not Joe Mignot on this one. Uh, Nathan, why don't you tell us what happens here in Grande? Ah, taco. Grande. <laughs> Ooh, Weird Al reference. Yeah. <laughs> and it is actually uh, somewhat uh, true because this is all about tacos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, their Warners are off to find a gift for Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Um, I don't know. Is it his birthday or something? Is he... <laughs> Yeah, something for some reason just uh, it's bald psychiatrist day is the so they're, they're oh, off okay. to a shop for him for the last minute. It's a you know it's the holiday that we all love bald psychiatrist day. I'm guessing it's just his birthday. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they call it. Yeah, he needs he, uh, <laughs> Doctor Scratch and Sif says, Wacko, I'd like a copy of Pachabel's Canon in D minor. And Wacko's like, I know what he said. He wanted he wanted tacos, bells, and cannons from Almira. So, ah. that's, so they're um, like, we gotta get tacos, <laughs> and they don't want to go deal with Elmira. Yeah, they don't want they don't want to see Elmira's bells, and uh, so they want to go to the well, I don't know what the Canon Imperium is. So that like that's where <laughs> they have lots of the Canon Emporium is where they would have lots of cannons, I guess, too. So they're just gonna get them tacos yeah let's um, just start with tacos because that's the easiest i guess yeah and they they see a place that uh, just happens to be here it's called manny's tacopolis uh and so they and there's a long line and they're talking in the line and someone's like uh hey uh you can't be talking in line uh don't you know who uh runs this place it's the taco tyrant and he comes over and sees this guy talking and says no tacos for you and uh, kicks him out of the line it's a so- reference to Seinfeld, the soup <laughs> instead of the soup Nazi, it's the taco, the taco tyrant, tyrant. Yeah, which, which is, yeah, it wasn't an alliteration before, so now it is the <laughs> yeah, it works good. So taco tyrant, uh, and he also ends up kicking the Warners out of line because they're also talking and being, uh, you know, rowdy and annoying. So uh, this was after Wacko had smelled how good the tacos smelled, so he wants to destroy the taco tyrant. He wants to humiliate him and beat him at his own game. Uh, so, of course, they're going to end up uh, making a, their own tacos restaurant, which is called Grande Tacos. And it's much better than Taco Tyrants. They have all these signs all over the place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they've got the storefront. Uh, now uh, they just need, like, salsa. So Wacko is going to dig for to find some salsa. And this is when the taco tyrant uh, sees what they're up to, and he's like, "Hey, you can't, you can't make a business uh, against me." And they're like, "Well, hey, look, it looks a little cloudy." And they drop a an anvil on his head. They like, looks like <laughs> anvils, and then they did the they do the classic. Uh, this means Warner's kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of uh, obviously taco tyrant's upset about all this, so he decides to sabotage the Warner's by. Uh, pouring water all over their taco shells but the tacos have <laughs> well the tacos are since they have sensors all over them uh and the warners are watching all these and they say oh there's a moisture breach in vault too so they they uh set up the emergency crispus crisperizer device which of course is just a you know fire uh and the uh taco tyrant is still in the room getting them all wet so he ends up burning up it's pretty bad 
Uh, yeah. This whole time, uh, Wacko is still digging for his salsa, still hasn't found it. But the taco tyrant decides to let out some la cucarachas, which are, of course, cockroaches. And uh, Yakko catches them before they enter the facility and says, hey, how do you like working for a tyrant like the taco tyrant? They're like, hey, it's it's terrible. And they do all these bug puns. And <laughs> <laughs> they go back to attack him. And, they uh, unionize. Yeah, there's a union of, of uh, cockroaches, and they, they, they basically quit. Um uh, and I guess they go get some ice cream. I, I didn't realize that was them saying, look, an ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, some random people are saying, look, an ice yeah, cream Yeah, I, I didn't get that either. Okay, good. Good that we know that this is just the cockroaches. <laughs> All right, but uh, this is when he sees the line of people standing waiting to get into Taco Gra- Grande's or whatever it's called, the Warner's Taco Restaurant. And they're like, oh, he's he's saying, you you don't want their tacos. Even if it's tacos on sticks, uh, <laughs> they're unsanitary. They're made by things, uh, which I guess are the Warners because they're just, they're cute. They're, they're not things. No, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but he's like, unsanitary. Uh, you're one to talk. You, you have uh, mice for fry cooks. And we look over, pan over, and it turns out the pinky and the brain are the ones that are, they're trying to make an atomic bean dip. Uh, to take over the world, and I guess Pinky's just making guacamole, but yeah, with his feet, I guess. I don't know if he yeah, was that's like, really gross. It's on his, on his feet. Yeah, I'm but. guessing he was like smashing it like a uh, wine, making wine. Yeah, so mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, and then the taco tyrants had it enough. He's decided to throw dynamite at the Warners, but that's when Wacko's like, "Ah, oh, that's what I just what I needed." So he throws it at his hole that he was digging, and then. When did you know it? Salsa comes out, and they've hit, they've struck salsa. There's the Mexican tea, um, and so they are rich, and they can take over the entire taco industry. And Taco Tyrant's quite sad. He knows he's been defeated. He cannot compete, so he has to close down his restaurant. And the grand opening of the Grande Tacos is here. Tacos on a stick. They you even see one of the guys eating it he seems to enjoy it just fine which i could see that happening i mean they make rolled tacos so why not have tacos on a stick i would eat a taco on a stick sure well i guess you don't uh, really need to taquitos are kind of like their own stick (laughs) i guess there's no real need the whole thing in your mouth in fact now they think about it why are i mean why are corn dogs dogs on a stick (laughs) stick? yeah wait a second it's so you can have it hotter i think no, so well, I think it's have... the way that it has to fry because you have to. But maybe I think you have to dip. Yeah, and you have to pull it out. Yeah, but that's the only reason. But really, really think about it. It's like you don't need that stick. I mean, you just whatever, whatever. <laughs> Why are popsicles on stick? No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Wacko got hungry and ate all of the tacos, so they are out of business. It looks like, but hey. We've got a knock on the door, and it's these celebrity associates that want to purchase this establishment to make a Planet Taco. Yeah. Uh, or at least Planet Taco stands, which I guess is supposed to be like Planet Hollywood, I'm assuming. Yeah, one of them looks like Bruce Willis. I guess the- another one is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and there's Danny DeVito. Yeah, which I don't think Danny DeVito was involved in Planet Hollywood at all, but they, they needed somebody else to draw other than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, he's they look identical because they're twins. There you go. So it's <laughs> Arnold and his twin. Uh, uh, yes. They decide to take the deal. They sell out their business. And that's how the uh, episode ends. They're going to buy. Go. Oh, they decide to buy uh, Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Probably a deep fried turkey on a stick, I think. It's- yes. Or lava, uh, or a lava lamp with real lava because I, will, I have all this money now. So yes. yeah, they, can they have, buy all these things. They can buy all a those bo- things. A pet boulder. <laughs> but, but they. They got out with a good and was good. Los well, Indos is how it ends too. So th- there you go. There was some cool. There was some cool stuff in there. I mean, I I never knew that salsa came from uh, the ground like oil. That was something I learned from this one. Uh, mm-hmm. Relatively amusing one right there. I mean, it was you know it was pretty good. Um, but they, yeah, they got some. They've got some vocabulary words in this one, like serendipitous. Yes, Seren- is- serendipitous and transcendental. Yeah, uh, were two words and a dot at the one point says, "Hey kids, that's that's an SAT word. Reading is fun and mental." 
Ah, fundamental. Like fun and mental. <laughs> but anyway, uh, some <laughs> some nice little puns around there. It had zero to do with Z- James Dean other than yeah. the the initial title. But it it was, if anything, more of a, a, a you know obviously Seinfeld thing going on. But I think it worked. It was. It was I nice. think James Dean would have liked Seinfeld. So there we go. That's, yeah. that's the connection. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He was around. He would like that. Well, I think it's time we go ahead and get right to our water tower rating. Well, Nathan, what do you think out of five water towers, how many would you give this issue of the Animaniacs comic book? It's been so long since we did this. I know. I totally forgot the other ones I gave. Yeah, I don't I don't track these either. So I could just give any number, you yeah. know. Um, I'll say four, four, four. No, four and a half. <laughs> four, four, four. Four, 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 and a half. Uh, four, four, and a half. Towers. Yeah. Four and uh, a half. Was, lots, of, lots of references. Got to see Pinky and the Brain in it, at least. Uh, got to a fun little slappy. And, you know, it was good. It was they could have e- they could do this for the reboot easily, I would guess. I don't know. I, they, they would did- have to make some changes to some of the you know outdated things yeah i mean oh and we also we didn't even mention they made some references to like fonzie and and, and oh yeah and happy days in this too there were Scooby-Doo. a lot of scooby-doo there was a lot of references and stuff that we didn't even mention but yeah it was it it really i did feel the same kind of thing i'll give it four and a half as well because i think that if this was an issue if this if they just took this stuff and they modified it a little bit and put it into the the new show i would be like wow this is like a real classic episode of animaniacs um, it had a theme throughout for the most part, you know, um, yeah. and it was funny. It just felt like classic kind of stuff. And did it work all the time? Not necessarily, but it is a comic book. And, you yeah, know, we might, like you would have to take out Dot pulling down James Dean, James Dean's pants. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she did like... pull down his pants at some point and, and it says, you know, hey, kids, He's... don't try this at home, basically, or something. She's like a that. professional manhandler. And yeah, like, which yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't pull down the guy's <laughs> pants as you're like hugging his knees. So there, and of course, like the monster grabbing the woman and yeah, putting her exactly. into the box. Yeah, Definitely not. Yeah, you can't do that so stuff. Definitely things had to go. But this was a better uh, cameo of uh, Chicken Boo than what the reboot. Totally. <laughs> it really felt like, yes, this is Chicken Boo. He'd be doing this. So, yeah, I mean, just... everybody felt in character. Everything felt right. It, it, it just felt good. So I liked it a lot. It was a lot of fun. The cover wasn't the best. Other than that. Yeah. Uh, which I should also mention, I don't know what the hot dog has to do, but, uh, you know, uh, they're they're kind of dressed up like James Dean characters as well. Uh, I'm sure there's the some the down home sausage. So I wonder if there's something. Yeah, dots. If someone's dressed... a huge. <laughs> dots the troubled youth from Rebel Without a Cause. Yakko is the oil tycoon, which I'm assuming is from the movie Giant. And East of Eden, the down home sausage. I have zero idea what Wacko James. Oh wait, I Got get it? it now. Jimmy Dean. Ah, the sausage. See, this is why we need to talk it out. Yeah, that's why I was like, let's let's just talk it real quick. I'm guessing like the listener would be like already yelling at us. You know, it's so, Jimmy Dean's sausage, obviously. <laughs> I'm eating one right now. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well, at any rate, that I I mean, there even more reason for a very strong four and a half, almost a five. I mean, but this is about as good as it gets when it comes to Animaniacs comic books. I think mm-hmm. uh, it's really good. I highly suggest people check it out. And uh, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Uh, Nathan, where can people get in contact with you online? Oh, Joey, I'm on Twitter, Django FT. That's me. All right. As for the Animaniacast, we're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And over on our Patreon, you can become a patron and listen to some exclusive audio, including commentaries with Tom Ruger about every episode of Animaniacs. We're going through them, and it's a ton of fun. We're laughing and learning facts, and uh, you'll not only be getting access to those, but you'll be helping support our show as well, uh, which is amazing. So thank you to our patrons. Uh, you can also get in contact with us on Discord. You can join the RetroZap Discord server by getting the welcome link, which is discord.animaniacast.com 
That'll take you on over to the RetroZap Discord server. We're a proud member of the RetroZap Podcast Network, so you can talk to them about anything pop culture, or you can go to the Animaniacs section and talk about Animaniacs, where there's some great artists and just great people there to talk to. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So for Nathan, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacs unless otherwise indicated. Hey, look at this. I got four dollars in my pocket. Well, what should I do with it? Oh, can't think of anything. I might as well just throw it in the street. Whoop. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What? Hey, you can't just throw away money like that. There's a lot of things you could do with four bucks. Like what? Well, like, uh, hey, you could become a patron over at patreon.com slash animaniacast. What? That's right. You know what you could do? You could get a, a, a great uh, commentary series with uh, the creative Animaniacs, uh, Tom Ruger. Oh, really? For four dollars? Yep, just for four dollars a month, you can become a patron and get all that commentary right there. Oh, wow. Well, what if I only have a dollar? Well, you could become a patron and just say, hey, here you go, Animaniacast. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. What, what if I have more than four dollars? Well, then you can give, give you, there's other tiers and stuff you can do if you want to, but you know, there's a lot of cool stuff, and it's a great way to support the show and all that jazz, and more importantly, you're getting the creative commentary series with Tom Ruger, so you can watch Animaniacs and uh, learn stuff and have fun and do stuff, I don't know, just do that instead. You know what, you're right, I will not throw my four dollars in the street right now. I'm going to patreon.com slash animaniacast right now.